advice as far as what I'm working on. I'm working on Fisher 400 paper, F-I-S-H-E-R. It's a little bit hard to get hold of at the moment. Um, usually you can get it from Amazon, but like everything, it's hard to get hold of. Uh, this one is slightly heavier. Well, it is probably twice as heavy in um, the paper, twice as sturdy and heavy as the um, UR600, but it's about the same grit as the UR600. So anything, and it's a creamy color. I have stained this paper to a lemon yellow. I'm not too sure why, but anyway, uh, I thought it would be great to start with the glow and by underpainting it initially, um, it's just giving me a surface to work on. I don't always do that. A lot of the time I will just work on the base, on the base color with no stain on it. But I thought for the sake of demonstration, this will speed things up. Now, so I've liquefied, I put down dry pastel and then liquefied it with solvent. Uh, let it dry. I've then used a grid system. Uh, you can just see the grid on there still. The grid system to enlarge my, so, so that it helps to quickly draw it in a larger way. And uh, it also helps with accuracy. And some and placement as well. Sometimes, I mean, this is a fairly simple bloom, just a single rose bloom. I could draw it. I can draw anything uh, without a grid. But this will just help. This just helps put things in place so that I know that they're they're there first time. I'm not having to think, oh, gee, I've got that in the wrong place. I'll have to shift it over, and on we go again. So that just helps. I've drawn in a pastel pencil in a color that will meld in with or melt, meld in with or unite with the successive colors. Now you can see that on my reference photo, there's a whole lot of stuff around the background. I have no intention of doing that stuff, uh, but I really, really liked the initial, uh, the, the bloom itself. The fact that it was all a glow set in, in amongst the garden Dew drops, I'm not going to do as many dew drops, uh, it, otherwise it'll look diseased. And, um, and so I, I just like the bloom itself. I, ha I haven't decided yet what I will do as a, a support for it in the background. I will put in some of the leaves on this side, but this side will be more broad and left open to suggestion. Okay, so just to get things going, I will do some brighter underpainting. And by bright underpainting, I mean intense colors. I just want to set things in place initially. And I didn't pull out the color that I really, really wanted. But let's get in some places to start the sparkle happening. So broad, broad shapes on the side of my pastel. I always work on the side of my pastel. And I work in pieces of pastel that are like about oh, five eighths of an inch long or three, three quarters of an inch long, changing the temperature and changing the, uh, the value slightly down here. I'll drag a bit of that across there too, a bit of that across there too. So what I'm just really wanting to do is to establish some bright things happening that will then uh, shine through in the successive layers. Now I want to go and I haven't picked up the right lemon yellow for my, for my tricks. So uh, I'll go and get a better lemon yellow from my supplies. All right, lemon yellow go in there, fit in there. You won't really see that. Oh yeah, yeah. you can, um, that's good. Round through there, up in here, down in here. Now, I, with any anytime I'm doing bright underpainting, I'm not going to put so much on that I cannot, that I haven't got options for change. There's still plenty of paper available to me. You don't want to fill the tooth of the paper, as you know. You don't want to fill the tooth of the paper too early, otherwise you're up the creek. Oh. That's probably an Australian saying, up the creek without a paddle. Um, 
So we don't want that. We want to be able to uh, change it as necessary. I might even put a bit of this out through here just to start something out there. Although it is going to go darker out there so that I will be able to see my image more clearly. But again, I haven't committed too far. I also want to get in some of the brighter central colors. Some of that can be wafted through this area. Now, in general, when I'm working by myself, I tend to just start at the top and work my way down. But because I want to speed the process up, changing temperature again into more of a yellow red rather than the blue pink. In general, uh, for, for the purposes of an exercise of uh, demonstrating, just to speed it up, I'm getting these, um, these values down initially, and I've put that in the wrong place, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. I haven't committed the mortal sin. All right. Okay, so that's probably enough initially for those bright areas of underpainting, maybe a bit of that through there. Okay, so now I want to work on getting down the underpainting in the lighter areas. Now, I haven't gone to the bright brights there, but I do want to get in some uh, a variety of different uh, values and colors. Like for example, I'll go to more of a mid value to place in underneath uh, my bloom. Wherever I can see this apricot kind of color, I will put a bit of that in, there's a bit in there. Uh, there's certainly a bit in there, perhaps making it up really. Uh, in there. Brands of pastel, okay. Um, I have a whole host of uh, variety of pastels. Those initial colours would have been would be uh, Giraud or Giraud, however you might like to say it, the French one. Um, I've also used already some Holbein, which is this red one here, and uh, and I've used Sennelia. This one here is, uh, oh, it's, it's one of my antique uh, Grumbucker, <laughs> which I've been, I've been looking for on, on the internet and I found some antique ones, which is wonderful. And I really love those, what a shame they don't make them anymore. Okay, and I'll get a little bit more orange in here, just there, so. Back and forth. Basically, what I do is um, I, I, I get all my elements in, get them all happening and, uh, and underneath so that then I've got options for coming over the top and making it more realistic. And it's like getting it all together and then, then pulling it all together. Right, into this, I will need a slight change of temperature. I'm going into something that's a little bit more violety. Notice how I'm putting it on in the shape or the contour of the flower itself. But again, very, very lightly because this isn't the right color. We're, but I'm going to make the right color out of a variety of other colors because it ends up so much more vibrant and so much more interesting. Some of that can go into there. I've gone to the shadow. There. Now I have put in lighter values, but I can't, but I haven't committed so far as to cause grief. Now, coming along into squinting, 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 I want to make sure that I'm going to be dark enough. A good idea too would be just to come in with some of my greens so that then I've got a real, a very good idea. Am I going to be the right value? 
So until you get the whole, a whole gambit of value relationships in, you really can't uh, make your judgment until you've got um, some of the other values around. So I've used Terry Ludwig, I've used um, Sonelia again, I've used Unison. Um, I, do I have a favourite pastel? No. Uh, although I am a fan of the um, Great American. I'm a fan of Terry Ludwig Darts. I'm a fan of um, uh, Richardson pastels. I love their beltiness. I'm a fan of Giraud. I'm a fan of Sonelia. As far as lights go, I'm a big fan of the uh, art spectrum, the Australian soft tinted whites. I think they're the best out there, I'm glad to say. Um, and they're the, also art spectrum's new, um, new soft tinted, extra soft tinted square pastels. I think that they're very good too. So there's a whole host, but what I'm looking for is basically the right colour, the right value. And so it doesn't really matter what it is, I'll pick up, that's what I'll pick up. Getting it just a little bit darker around there. Okay, so I make a mess before I make something out of it. Not always a masterpiece. The, I'll, I'm going to go a little bit darker with my shadows. I think that will be good and here and here, wanting to get the roll happening. The interesting with flower, thing with flowers is uh, very much the terminator, the way that the light terminates from the front, where the shadow terminates into the light. And there's a darkening on that area. Um, need to recognize those things, the terminator, where is it lightest? Where is it highest to the light? Um, so that uh, you get the right roll on it. Once you put all these, my basic color principle is red, blue, yellow. I don't talk in terms of cool and warm because that's always very subjective. Well, red, blue, yellow is too. Um, depending on uh, what the color is sitting beside as to whether it appears more yellow, more red or more blue. A, a suggested warm color could look cool in a different circumstance as can uh, a suggested red look more blue in a different circumstance. But I found that, uh, I find that in talking red, blue, yellow, um, it helps me to see clearly the relationships of color side by side. And so that's why I do that. So I'm constantly thinking, right, are you more red? Are you more blue? Are you more yellow? And then I think, right, if you're a red, what sort of red are you? That one's going to be too heavy. I'll, go, I'll, under, I'll pull back on that a bit. You go more into this color. Uh, and if you are a red, what sort of red are you? Are you a yellow red, a blue red, a red red? And then further, are you a fully saturated bright, which means that you have two colors in you? Or are you a more brown or grayed down neutral color, which means that you have an element of all three? And so by doing that, I can actually recognize any color and make it up. I don't have to have it in my box, but I recognize the properties of the color and then I can put them down. And I think that, you know, it, it certainly has made life easy. That was something I had the privilege uh, in 1999 of working with Mr. Daniel Lee Green. And uh, it was an, a most amazing time. I had a couple of weeks with, with him out in his uh, North Salem studios. And really it revolutionized my whole practice in painting. And so um, Mr. Green, as we all know, passed away, was it last year, I think it was, along with Richard, Richard Schmidt, who also had a, a significant influence on me. And uh, 
and I'm eternally grateful for what I learned in my class with Mr. Daniel E. Green. Okay, now, big mess, big mess. That's all right, I don't care. Uh, it won't stay a mess, I hope, but I'm setting the scene, setting the scene. That one's too red, I need to go a little bit more yellow. What have we got? That's too light. It's like, um, it's really like uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Is it just to, to this, to that? Oh, and just right. A bit more gold in there. Gold in there. Yellow in there. Stronger golds through here. Nice strong greeny gold here. Now eventually I'm going to calm down and start finishing uh, my, my, my petal, my roses themselves. But first of all, I'm going to just set in place some of the leaves on this side. So I've got a better idea of what's happening. All right. These are a wee bit more blue, so I'll go into more blue rather than the yellow green. Like so, like so. And this is, a, again, underpainting, just getting shapes in. I'm not going to be particularly pedantic about the shapes, but I do want them to look like uh, rose kind of petal, uh, rose leaves, that's for sure. We don't want them to look like some other supporting leaf. Uh, this is the Terry Ludwig, the beautiful, rich, dark brown. I find that when you stick, well, uh, when you put brown, a lovely, rich, ready brown with your greens, you get wonderful, dark, lustrous colors and a dark green and dark red of some sort or red brown, be it red brown, red violet, red whatever will give you those lovely rich darks that we all crave to have. And it also means that things start to pop and uh, make sense. Don't know what to do over there yet. So I won't go there. All right, so uh, what other color can I whack in there? I might get in. Gold, no, I think I'll go to the lighter color, a bluey color in there. Needs, this, needs some gold, so I'll put the gold in underneath. And that'll make a really beautiful color over the top. So I'm thinking about shapes, I'm thinking about how it sits. I'm not worrying about um, things like dewdrops and that. That's the bling. I like to put the underneath on. Put on your undies and then put on your earrings, is what I am saying. Um, and I, I don't know, an underwear. Put on your, the things that go below the outside bling. So establishing all of that important under painting that support then the lovely little bits of, of bling on top. Okay. Have we sent them all to sleep or are they awake? <laughs> They're watching. They're watching. <laughs> uh, I'll just find another better green, a nice bright green. What did you tell me about the it was just a lemon yellow. Uh, the question was, what did I turn the paper with? Lemon yellow. Um, oh, there's a good color now on top of that. So lemon yellow. And I can't remember what brand, and it doesn't really matter, but it was a lemon yellow. There's a, a lovely color, which is the same value as that bluey green underneath, but it just puts it into a better, uh, a bit of flags running over the top of those two. I'll set them aside. 
so that I know what I've done. Especially when you're demonstrating and yabbering away, you can never remember what you've done. So, um, well, I can't anyway. For me, every painting is a new journey and a new, a new um, uh, arrangement of colours or relationship of colours, of shapes. I rarely do the same subject again, although I have, but the worst thing you can do if you're doing the same subject is to think, how did I do that last time? Because then you're really stimmy uh, or, or, or um, curtail or shorten your creative process because you're worrying about, oh, did I do that right? Uh, I like to start, start out and get into every painting is a new journey for me. Now, I can do a bit of blending. I could leave it rawer or more suggested, but sometimes I just like to tweak. I like to just run my finger through there and then come back, settle in with the corners, with the edge of my, my finger, my little ring finger on my right hand, and just soften edges. So I think that works. Or I can just press heavier, of course. But I want to cover up any of the little yellowy suggestions the, um, from the underpainting. I don't want that to be distracting. Sculpting. I call my, I call what I do sculpting in tone or sculpting in values. My action is sculptural. I think about uh, the design of the, or how the surface falls. And I put in that action with my hand. So if it comes this way, I've got to present both length and width. Keep a piece of paper towel in my hand so that I can control um, control the, the dirt and rubbish on my hand. So I don't want dirty pastels and I don't want dirty finger if I'm going to stick my finger up in into uh, the um, painting. Just glaze a little bit. Into here, into there, into there, into there, into there. Slightly darker. You can still go back and forward, but though on the whole, you would always do your darks first, your bright, your, your brights and your darks first, followed by the lights on the whole. But you can go back and forward. And on the whole. Uh, we tend to go and put down our, um, uh, use our harder pastels first and then go to the softer pastels. However, there are times that you can use your, uh, your um, hard pastel to push in the soft pastels, which is a good idea sometimes when they, they just float around and get a bit chalky looking. And we don't want it to look like chalk. Okay, just about there. Enough to then get on with the main event. And then, you know, if I have time, then I'll do some more out here later on. Now there's blending and there's blending. You'll notice that when I'm blending, I am not, e -e 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 -e. I'm not pushing too heavily. I am simply dancing over the surface of the paper and encouraging the edges and the colours to meld together. So nothing is floating on top of the surface of the paper. But it's all sitting in together nicely. I use, I use my values to pop things forward or pull them back. And soft edges, of course, edges. Edges will always do that. 
a hard edge you will always see, a soft edge will disappear and, uh, and, and, and push things away into the background. But if you want it to come forward, see that uh, edge there on that leaf, how it pulls forward. Because I put a dark uh, value, first of all, in behind, but secondly, I've left a hard edge. If I, if, I, if I wanted to soften that off, then I'd just give it a little bit of a, a prod. I don't want to spell everything out in here. And we can um, chop and change shapes very easy, but easily by um, using background, negative spaces. So you can have a lot of fun playing negative against positive. So, and, and in fact, this is abstract shaping, abstract painting. Okay, now I think I can return to uh, my, um, my rose itself. I might just pull in some of that color in behind. Or maybe it should go more into this color. Don't know about that. Probably wrong choice. Let's then just change it into this color. Soften. Don't know about that either. That was that's one of these times when you um, think, oh, I really should have resolved that and worked it through. But anyway, <laughs> this will be better. There we are. Just something there to be able to see, and I can still change that around to my heart's content. Probably softening off that so that we're going into the background there. And some of the goldy colors coming through into here rather than that dark. Softer, 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 softer. Okay, now getting into the, the petal, the flower itself, needing to go into some of the pinks. What sort of pink will it be? It can be, let's try this one. There's a whole host of different colors in this, in this flower, uh, which makes it a tricky little sucker. But, you know, we live dangerously. Why do anything that's easy for a demonstration? <laughs> okay. Now you can see immediately I do need to go darker behind there. So my thought, my thought of having a wonderful glowy bit is probably not a good idea. It can glow, but perhaps it's got to go darker. And that's going to be better. Okay, now coming back to my flower, let's get this happening. A nice, beautiful yellow in the, into the corner there, followed by our orange. Make it a little bit more yellow. Bit more yellow again. And pulling out to the outside edge here. Tiny touch of green. 
just rolling the edge there into here. That works the tree because it in it it brings in our outside colors into our inside. Now I can go and whack on some light. I'll start first of all just rolling this with my finger, putting on both length and width. pulling it over. If you're going to do blending, it has to be sculptural. It has to be with a sculptural action. It's not just one direction. Pulling it around. I don't mind if I pull in some of the background. As a matter of fact, sometimes I like to encourage it. For example, there. I'll grab some of the green from behind and put it in into the shape itself. It doesn't come to become muddy, but it allows it to, these are such uh, thin, fine petals that we want it, they are transparent, they are translucent. And so they would, you would be seeing some of that background color coming through. You can see some of the green in underneath. Now I can go just that little bit lighter on the edge there. A little bit lighter, even again, just there. Press it in gently, gently, gently. I can get a little bit lighter here, just ever so slightly where I want it to roll a bit further. Like so, and into here. A bit more shadow up here, so I'll take a bit more green. Whack it in. Now, I'll continue on over here with our, all the colors. That peachy color that I've got in my hand. It's gonna be the one that pulls it all together. This is a handmade pastel, this one. Uh, I, I crunched up all my bits and pieces and made a new pastel. It's pretty good because it's, and, and it's an easy thing to do, as probably some of you are aware. You just keep all your bits and pieces, that, the little bits that you can no longer hang on to, and you keep them all, and then, uh, then you crunch them up, and you can decide you can control the colour yourself. You know, what colours are you putting in there? You, you might have some greens in with some reds to make some browns, different things. Crunch them all up, stick a little bit of water in there and you've got a new pastel. It's wonderful. It's, it's actually quite addictive. That's such a mess around it. Shouldn't have... Um, Quite such a mess around it. That's better. And I will just bring a little touch more light here and there, pulling that forward. A little touch more light underneath here. Then helps to bring that out. A little touch more light. This is now a yellow light coming here. Pulling the golden glow out from the center. And the golden glow really won't be seen until uh, we get the darkness beside it. 
and I'll strengthen it a bit more. Like so. And I could put on, as I, as I go, I would do the two drops. Um, but first of all, I just want a little bit more uh, purpley gray in here. So what I've done is I've put it on the, I've put my finger on the pastel and put it up there so that it doesn't, you don't get quite so much on there. I can do the same thing here. It just delivers a small amount of the pastel up rather than a great big hit. All right, now, some more tips of light. And it's a yellow light. What's happened to my yellow light? needs to go lighter than that. So I'll go and get me a lighter value. A lemon yellow in, um, in the art spectrum. Just wanting to pull that up. A nice pink light up on top here. For the peach, you know, the peach light on there. So, like so, like so. Touch of light in the bone here. As soon as you get those lights on, things start to come to life. So you've got the, then the full gambit of um, value in this shadowed petal. We'll touch the lighter just along there. All right, now I can go in and uh, pull out slightly darker there too, rolling it more. Go in and pull out this central area and that'll help me to then uh, have another look at what's behind, the relationships of what's behind. Okay. Redraw. Get in a purple on the edge, purpley gray. Purpley gray on the roll and draw in the shadow shape, but don't leave an outline on your shadows, whatever you do. Because the outline will then make it look like a hole, not a shadow. Put that in there too. and continue into these shadow areas here. A little bit of a roll on this area here. There. Onto here. Onto there. 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 A little tiny touch more orange first, pulling in there as well. Okay, now we're going into more of a pink. What sort of pink is it? Pulling it this way. 
bit more up there. It's sort of, um, it's a very strange colour. You, you, I'm, I'm, I'm going back and forward between something that's more pink and something that's more peach. Here. And more yellow. Cut out the shadow again, or the light, whichever way around you want to see it as. And I can cut it out to make it more definite. Sometimes I like to run the shadow and the light together and then refine the shadow. Like so. And put a bit more of the pink in here. Right. Pink into this area here. Now we're getting into the eye of the rose itself. Quite orange. Round into here. Orange on the angle there. The other thing too, that once I start putting on dew drops, it's going to make more sense. Always makes more sense. When you're in shadow, you get much more of a, um, uh, a glow happening when you get those ticks of light that the dew drops are. But first of all, I just want to establish the whole um, top, part, top part here. Pinks. I'll just mush that in and then I can divide it up. Orange again. Make sure it's not outlined there. Now I can go lighter to cut out the central portion. Use my little handmade one. So using negative, positive all the time, going back and forth between the negative and the positive, uh, you can create uh, very easily the shapes rather than having to do the shapes individually. Here I can, here I can just tip the edge of the uh, the eye of the flower, but then I sorry yeah Ken could come right in and we can have a look, and then then we can uh, then I can go and get something even brighter to find the center of the flower brighter darker. Let's try this one perhaps. Oops, what from that stuff? Even stronger. I might go and get my crochet. Really hit it. Oh, no, maybe not that one. Maybe a cherry lovely. Not enough. Get the drawing correct. More orange. Darker for the center. I hope it's not that dark, but if I put the dark down, then I can come back and moderate it 
uh, with a mid value. At least I'm starting to see that central portion as darker than what's around. Then I can come with my lights, the light edge, and pull this one in front. Down here, go lighter again. Slight pinky pinchy color. Let's keep on rolling away down here. Light on this edge. Just soften it ever so lightly so I can see it in front of the one behind. And put a bit more gold in here. Like so put some gold in here. Touches of gold through here as well. Okay, then I can change. It's just building bit by bit by bit. Getting this one on, getting the little edge on there. A goldy area on the outside. Slightly more yellow. And a little touch of dark. A little bit more touch of dark here. Okay, working away out again. I might put uh, on at this stage, I might put on some uh, dew drops just for the heck of it. So that we can start to see what's happening behind. I'm, I'm still. I'm not happy with what's happening out here. So I might just have a bit more play. Ah. Alluding to shapes. Golden colors. I'm just wanting it dark enough so I can see um, this is my big brush in action. If you want a big area done in a hurry, you just put your hand, hand in it and pull it around. All right, now I can get some uh, of the dew drops happening. So first of all, I want a darker value to uh, create a shadow. So I'll put a shadow on.
And there's a bit of a shadow just up in here. That's picking up some of the green. So let's find the, the green that needs to go up in there. And then it's about the light. So there's a little ting of light up here. There's a slight uh, light as it passes through the dewdrop. And then there's a drag of light out here on this particular one. Not too much, a little bit more than that. We can get some nice dewdrops on the, um, the top edge. So it can just be pulling some of the color of the flower up and over. Like so. And putting a little ting on the top. A bit more. So let's do a decent sized one in here. Now it can be not as bright because it's in the shadow. What color? Could it be the peach? No, I think it's got to be a slight mauvey kind of color. Or even a light green. A light green might work. Try this one. Not quite right. I like that color though, I might put that everywhere. So what we're seeing is a darker piece up here. So but these are just suggestions and then it'll come to life when you put the light in. So no, probably not that light. Touch of light at the top. Oopsie. Maybe ever so lighter, so much lighter. Although that's a bit distracting. So I don't want that. I'll just mush it in and give the illusion. Oh yeah, there's another. There's another um, dew drop there. We can down in the into the shadow area. Oh, this beautiful one here. Let's do that one. And it's all about light, this one. The light passing through the base of the dewdrop. A touch of green as it comes up into that area. So I'm just doing a rounded sort of stroke, pulling it together. And then it's ping of light that's uh, actually showing stronger um, where it's pulling through underneath. Missed by that much. And could put a little one out this side. It's pulling off like that. Half an hour to go, holy hill, and like that. Down into here. I'm so I'm being very slow today. Let's get the darkness around the dewdrop. Oh, 
the light into the dewdrop can be a yellow light. And that's probably not slightly lighter. This one down in here, let's go and pop it in. That's the color I've been looking for all along. And it's got a beautiful, uh, just yellow, lemon yellow light. So you can do as many of those things as you want, but let's continue on here and try and get a little bit further before time runs out. Just lighten that off to make it roll a bit more in the shadows. The shadow has to continue on with what's happening out in here as in the form has to continue on all the way through. Lynn, just to let you know, you still have a half an hour. Yeah, I know, half an mm -hmm. hour. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Thank you. Ken was warning me. <laughs> Sorry, it's like watching paint dry, isn't it? Doing flowers. I'm still not happy with that there in the background, but uh, that's the sort of thing I'll have to resolve um, a bit later on in the quietness. I'll, I'll bring that this edge ever so slightly further forward by chucking the light on. Now let's get into just sorting this bit out. Um, a nice shadow area across here where it's turning. Lovely golden area in there, which will have to be settled down. Tucking it in behind, bringing it over. A lot more shadow. I'm using a unison here. And I might bust it because otherwise you just use it as a line, not as a chunk of color. Into here, let's get that a bit darker, a little bit darker again. There's a, uh, you can hear the Rocher scratching away. <laughs> That's a little piece of Honor Rocher. And I'm rather partial to their reds and yellows in particular. People say, are they worth it? Yes. <laughs> Donna says she enjoys watching the form materialize with so few strokes. Yeah, once you get through the fiddly parts, thanks Donna. <laughs> once you get through the fiddly parts and get into the broad parts, um, it, it, it moves very, very rapidly. And it's a matter of just whack, getting hitting the right values, more so than the color. It's the values that are the kingpin. And I like to use the side of my pastel so that, you know, I am using a paintbrush. I'm not just using a, the tip of it. I mean, you can, you can make up your, um, the form by lots and lots of lines, but I would prefer to just hit it with the tip of my, with the side, broad side of the pastel and uh, build it up like that. It's a lot less, Time. It's like having a big brush for the big area on an oil paint and a small brush for the small area. There's so many different little colors and nuances in this thing. And uh, if left to my own devices, I would uh, not be quite as broad as what I'm doing here. I would, I would spend more time, obviously.
And the other one I would like to just get in place is um, this over here. So you can see the different color arrangements. But first of all, I'll get that a bit stronger in there. A bit more yellow, a yellowy orange, a very strong yellowy orange in places and then more red in others. Okay, now I can start building this form. Go lighter with the yellow lights. Lighter in here. And now I've got all of that beautiful underpainting in there. Then it will still do the work coming through because I'm literally tickling uh, the surface into being. Here we go into some lights here. So the, the adage of less is more is quite true. You don't have to put a line all the way along. Matter of fact, if you put a line all the way along, it's likely to flatten your shape. Whereas if you have a suggestion here and there, it gives you your it gives your shapes more contours. It gives you the form more contours, which is much more interesting. A lovely area of light can be fine here. It's yellow light, so I can still go lighter on that area there. And some shadow. Bit darker than that, I think so. So I'm constantly asking myself color, value, what sort of line am I going to leave? What sort of edge am I going to leave? It's all about line, value, color, edge, creating form. I'm going to put some of that in here, along with some of our blue green from the outside, just in that section there. Creating this shadow shape here, sculpting out the form. Now pulling it into the shape, sculpting the form here. Here. Finding an edge, but then pulling it over. So never leaving a drawing, a line edge as such. The line can be created by coming back in behind and finding the dark. I'm not happy with the center area, but it'll get there. Um, okay, then I can come over this shadow, this light area here, sorry, and create my roll, like so. Put in uh, some other colors into this shadow here. I think it could have a bit of the gold in it as well. That'll turn it nice and green, sitting in front. Then we can get the goldy colors in here. And some wonderful, um, probably gold pulling through here, but I don't want to make too much of it but just to give it some more form. Okay, now I can push the light further. Lighter. Oops, 
missed by that much. Lighter as it rolls, lighter on the roll. And darker underneath to find the roll. So rather than putting a light on the edge, because I don't really want to edge it, I want to roll it. It's coming over. You can see it coming, turning because it's picking up the third value. Uh, the roll has to be formed by three values. Um, uh, uh, two, two values will create just a pattern, whereas we're looking for three values to create a roll. that section out there a bit more. Now, this area here needs to be slightly lighter behind. So it's a constant squinting game, back and forward, back and forward. That then pushes forward this lip, which could have a slight touch of light along it. Like so that brings that forward. It's amazing, isn't it, that, um, that play of light and dark, hard and soft, can create so much the interest of form. It's all about those relationships of of values um, and, uh, and edges that can create our illusion to shape on this two-dimensional surface. Fascinating business. Could take this just ever so slightly lighter. That's the shadow shape. Or alternatively, I could take it slightly darker and probably slightly darker. If I could find my oranges, that would be really good, but who knows where they are. I've been, I've been doing uh, all my preps for getting to um, Austin for Streamline Publishers and I've got stuff everywhere. And so I really can't find anything. You know, when you just go into your studio and you chuck this and you chuck that. And... Anyway. Now, getting on some more light along here. And of course, you know, you've got to spend time also putting on the dew drops and uh, that will give it all the personality that I, I want. Dew drops are like having um, people in a landscape where it, it helps it to, you know, gives it life and interest. Slightly lighter here. But then I can see the darker, um, darker light behind. Rolling it. Roll, roll, roll. But let's now, I want to get into here so that I can see it and get this shape a bit better. So there's a lovely green area down in here. I believe it's a little bit more green than that. Is that greener? Yeah. And by getting that in, then I can get the light, little light edge just here. It then shows me where the bottom of the um, the rose, the, bo the bottom bowl of the rose is. And this color can come in here. Let's start setting the scene. darker I think I don't want to go too light too early C 
setting the same. Darker again, and then here, more goldy glow. So, some of that goldy glow and the green should come up into here too. It's a bit, a bit flat, a bit flat just there, and I think it's because of that edge there. So I'll just pop that in, mush it around, chop it off. We can see the base of it if I then got two and put some dark in underneath. Then you're starting to see the rose there. Uh, there is a kind of purplishness through it. So I'll put a bit of purple in there. I kind of hedge my bets a bit. Um, uh, you know, I put a bit of red, a bit of yellow, a bit of blue, and then decide on which one's the one that's the most dominant and pop that in as well. Slightly darker through here. And you think, how the heck don't you make mud? Well, the thing that I don't make mud because I don't, I don't overblend. Overblending is one way, one great way of making mud. When you just blend and blend and blend the heck out of it. And, uh, and that's when it will turn into mud. And we don't want mud. Bit more gold there. More gold there. In there. And of course, you'd see this more if you had your your background on. Let me put it in what color, I don't know. Goldy green there. Here, ten minutes. Yeah, oh, I should be able to get this on in ten, including Kristen. Yeah, that's all right. Let's cut this out a bit better. Uh, we've got a nice light touch just here. I can do these abstract shapes. That allude to activity behind. And I think probably eventually I'll take that bit off. And of course, adjust the colors, but just for the sake of being able to see this petal, I want to get that in. All right, now, a peachy kind of color. Whack that in, whack that in, whack that in, whack that in. Hills and valleys. 
the green can come in there. The green can come in there. It's the world of color. Now I can whack my light in. Get that in quickly. What sort of light? This sort of light? Is that going to be light enough? I think so. Let's cut that out. Oh, yeah. Into here. Round onto there. Touches of light down here. Light here. Light picking up there. Light in here. Pulling little shapes. Whoops. Like so, like so on the roll. Getting lighter again. Now you're better, better off sneaking up on your lights. Um, before, you know, don't go too light too early. This is the tiniest bit of, of um, Great American. And just hold it. Then tells me I can lighten there too. Tells me I can lighten there. Lighten here. So you can push and push and pull. It's a shame about that ugly mess up there. Uh, but anyway, oh well. Let me put on this beautiful dewdrop in here. What are you, Mr. Dewdrop? Um, just. Sharon says it's like watching the rose bloom. So dynamic. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. It's a shame about the background. I should have resolved the background before I um, started into it. Anyway. These are the things that you do. Yeah, yeah, so sculpture is 3D. Linda said, so sculpture is 3D. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Linda, for that comment. That's what my whole, my whole um, aim is to sculpt form, give the illusion of, form, of a sculptural form on this flat surface. And so, uh, you know, that's what I, the whole aim of my painting is all about that this fascination fascination for building the illusion of the three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface um, and and often the comment is when people see my work uh, is that oh gee it looks real some people say oh it looks like a photograph and I say I hope not <laughs> I hope it's better than a photo um, so I'm not, I'm not a photorealist, I'm a, um, I'm a painter of what I would call a painter of reality. That's what my aim is anyway. Get some little touches of the light. Questions for five, questions for five? yeah? Are we, are we finished here and? Oh, I've got five minutes, okay. A big part of And I just would like to pull these lights up a bit further. Now, whether I do it with yellow. Or whether I do it with a pinky color or a no, it's an odd colour. It's such an odd colour, this rose. Why did I choose this? I don't know. It just looks fun. Um, 
Let's go a little touch lighter. Oops, that's too light in there, but I'll mush it. I'm going to bring some of the green in. See how by doing that, and then I can rediscover an edge. But by bringing the green in, it just inherits the um, inherits the background into the flower itself, makes it more translucent. Need to make this sort of appear a little bit whiter, as in W H Y T E R. Now, if I went into the palest of greys, maybe I think that works. Now it's interesting, isn't it? You would think that ooh, that wouldn't work, but there you go, it does. In actual fact, as long as you get the right value, it's going to be all right. Values really are the king pin. I never understood what a value was really until I looked through. I painted instinctively for years because I've been I've been painting since I oh kid in in uh, primary school, what we call primary school. So I sold my first painting when I was twelve years old. Um, and I never really understood what I was doing. I just so happened did it instinctively. And uh, I can remember wanting to do watercolor at one stage and uh, watercolors, you, you kind of understand values to be able to do it prop well as a fresh, pure watercolor, as opposed to, you know, one that you resort to gouache uh, to uh, put your lights back in. And I can remember looking, someone said to me, look through this gray glass thing. And I looked through the gray glass and it was like electric shock. Oh, is that what I'm supposed to be looking for? And uh, it really made a difference to my whole practice and understanding of, uh, of painting, those values. And then I became, and then I started to worry about edges because I really didn't know. I thought my edges were all right, and, um, but they weren't. They were spelled out too much. I was jumping too far value-wise and so creating uh, uh, aspects that were just too, uh, a little bit too graphic more than reality. And so I really started to concentrate on, on lost and found edges and uh, discovered that uh, how important they are. Let alone your drawing, you know, drawing always helps. I start with a fairly, fairly accurate drawing map. Um, you, you won't get lost with a decent map. You get, you get lost for days if you have a lousy map. Um, and so that's, that's important as well. So Ken, we, we run out yeah, of time. Well, you probably should take two. Um, from Arlon, thank you for sharing so much about blending the sculpture and how it brings such lines of the petals and the flower just grows. Oh, that's thank you. Um, have we have I reached the end? Yes, and you're getting some more comments. Um, let's see, stunning edges. Uh, Lori says, thank you for sharing so much about blending in a sculptural manner. It brings such life to the petals and the flowers just glow. And um, mush and whack are awesome techniques. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a whole dictionary of technical terms. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just been mesmerizing. It's just gorgeous. Thank you so much. And if anybody wants to make comments, just unmute yourself and go ahead and, and make a comment to Lynn. And, or if you and questions me. too. If you have questions, um, you know, now's the time. <laughs> oh, Thank you, there. Lynn. This has been most fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Pleasure. And listen to. <laughs> As I burble around thinking, I don't know, I'll just put this in here now and see what happens. <laughs> I can watch you for another hour. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very good. Lynn, kind. your confidence is astounding, and it's very refreshing to hear a very confident artist. Oh, thank you, Linda. 
Thank you. Uh, I just pretend to be confident and, and underneath <laughs> swimming like a duck thinking, oh, well, let's give this a go. Oh, well, will that work? Okay. All right. <laughs> of course, when you work, when you're working in your own studio, it's a lot easier to think through the thoughts uh, and, you know, and do it a little bit more, not quite so haphazardly. But uh, mind you, most of my paintings start out like a, a, a dog's breakfast. <laughs> and then I, then I pull them together. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other, other description is Chinese cooking. You know, the, the Asian style of cooking is preparing all your, your uh, ingredients. Chop, 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 chop. Then you throw them in a wok and they come out beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Enid says, I love the way the leaves look, 3D and create distance. Um, Kristen says, really love the demonstration. Thank you. Um, Lori says, I'm struck by how detailed the map is, but the ending flower petals just blend together. Thank you. Uh, Kristen, let's see, Lynn says, we will post the finished paint. Oh, that's you, you'll can. finish painting <laughs> and it will take a while. It has a lot going on. Yeah, uh, not Bonnie says, thanks so much. And uh, we'll also be um, posting the recording of this on our PAO YouTube channel. So you can watch for that. It'll probably take us about a week to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thank you so much. That's my pleasure, my pleasure. And hopefully you picked up just a few different techniques that um, you can add to your armory of, of um, technical know-how. Mm -hmm.